Welcome back to the carbuyingtips.com YouTube channel. Usually you see us out there showing you how to save money and avoid scams when buying a car. But today we're actually going to troubleshoot and fix a little problem that the C6 Corvette behind me is having where it's running a little rough, especially when it's idling. Now, don't forget to subscribe to our channel down below and also click on that alert button so that you get alerted every time we post some new content. That way you don't miss any of our great videos. In order to read the error fault codes that are in the engine computer, which will sometimes be accompanied by a check engine light showing up on the dashboard, you will need one of these OBD readers. This is actually the OBD2 standard. Uh, this is a Bluetooth dongle that's going to plug into the port on the vehicle. And if you'll notice here, there's some status lights that'll show you when it's in there and plugged in properly and when it's communicating with the phone. Since this is Bluetooth, it's going to have to work with an app on your smartphone. From what we've researched, the best apps are the Android apps. It's recommended to do this with an Android phone. They do have them available for iPhone as well, but I cannot vouch for how good those are. So uh, we've got this app here on the Android phone. So you'll see here that uh, there's a connector on the bottom as a very good design. It's an asymmetrical connector so that you can only plug it in the proper way in the port on the vehicle. And so once we plug that in, we're going to have to use the app as we spoke about. The Bluetooth OBD reader that we have is paired with this Hork app. So we're just going to click there to open up the app. And that's what it looks like. It will connect via Bluetooth to the dongle, and then we'll be able to read the fault codes. We're going to put a link down below of how you can get uh, your very own OBD reader. They're not very expensive. It's highly recommended that you keep one of these if you do a lot of troubleshooting on your own vehicles. The OBD port is almost always located on the driver's side of the vehicle underneath the dashboard. In this vehicle, it is oriented uh, straight vertically. Some vehicles, it will be facing you. Plugging it in is very simple. Just try to get a good view of it here for you. It is important to remember that this is a keyed asymmetrical connector, so you need to make sure that you're plugging it in in the right orientation. Once you got it seated in there, you'll see the light light up, which indicates that it is plugged in and has power. And now we'll just need to start the engine and we'll be able to read the fault codes. There you see those lights flash indicating that it's sending data to the app and now we'll be able to read the fault codes. All right, so we've got this Bluetooth reader that we're just gonna plug on here. When you see that red light come on, that means your connection's good. And now we'll be able to start up the vehicle and read any error codes. All right, cylinder three misfiring. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is remove the cover on this side of the engine, and that way we'll be able to access the plugs and wires and coils. It's very easy to do, it just snaps off pretty much, and there we are. So we know from our uh, ODB2 reader that cylinder three had a misfire issue, which is that cylinder right there. So what we did as a first troubleshooting step is swap the spark plug wires between cylinder three and cylinder five, and then we're gonna fire up the engine and see if the problem follows the wire or if it stays with cylinder three. All right, so after switching the wires between cylinder three and cylinder five, you can see, see that we still have uh, the same fault here, cylinder three misfiring, so our troubleshooting will have to continue. Unfortunately, swapping the wires did not solve the problem, so what we're going to have to go ahead and do is change the spark plug and the coil. It's most likely the coil that's the issue, but while we're taking everything apart, we might as well change the spark plug also. All right, well, here's the new parts that we're going to use, both of them genuine AC Delco, 
just to make sure we're going to keep everything the same as it originally was, especially since we're just changing one of the eight cylinders. All right, so we've got all of our tools here that are required to change the spark plug. All we need is a uh, 5 8 inch spark plug socket, a little uh, 3 8 extension, and a 3 8 drive wrench. Not very many tools required, it's a pretty simple procedure. All right, so to get started, we're just going to uh, simply remove the wire from the spark plug and uh, see it pops off really, really easily, simple. And now we're ready to remove the spark plug. All right, we've got our spark plug socket and our wrench here, and we're just going to go down in there and remove the old spark plug. And there's the old spark plug. All right, so we're going to go ahead and uh, put the new spark plug in. What you want to do is uh, get it started by hand because you want to make sure that you do not cross thread the spark plug. If you do that, you're going to do some serious damage to your engine that's going to be very expensive to repair. So you get it started by hand, and then once you feel that the threads have caught correctly and it's screwing in smoothly, then you can go ahead and finish tightening it with your wrench. Now we've got it in there, and all you need to do now is pop the wire back on. Just uh, press it in there until you feel it snap on and lock in, and then you should be good to go. All right, so here we have the tools required to change the ignition coil. It's a relatively simple procedure, so all we need here for this vehicle is a 10-millimeter socket, and we just have a quarter-inch drive here because that's what matches up with our 10 millimeter socket in the toolbox and you just need that and your hand and a couple fingers and it'll come off really easily and you'll get the new one on there really easily as well. All right, so in preparation to change the coil, we're just gonna need to uh, get the wires off both ends. First the spark plug wire and then other electrical connector at the top. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and uh, remove the coil on this vehicle. Uh, it's a 10 millimeter socket that we need, and it's uh, pretty simple. You just uh, unscrew these two bolts, and then the coil will come right off. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and place the brand new coil on. Very simple, just the opposite of what we just did to take the old one off. Just line it up with the holes and bolt it on there. Now we just tighten them down. Then we reconnect the electrical connectors. First the top connection, then the spark plug wire. The order of that operation does not matter. So whatever is easier for you, you can go ahead and do. Now once that's on there, we're done. Just that simply. All right, crank it up, Willow. <laughs> 
So now that our repair is complete, let's scan for codes and see if we actually fix the problem. Might take a little bit of time here, hopefully not too long, but it's got to scan that whole ECU, make sure nothing pops up. And luckily the app warns us that it may take some time so that we don't start getting anxious here. And we can see great news, there's no fault codes. So that means we fixed the problem. Another successful day in the driveway shop. All right, so now that we're all done, we just need to uh, put the uh, decorative engine cover back on. It's a very simple operation here, as you'll see. Just gotta route that uh, one little hose through there and then it'll snap in and it'll look just like it came out of the factory. So here we are uh, taking the test drive after the repair. You'll see there is no check engine light or anything, which is uh, as we expected after doing the code read with the reader. But it's always nice to take a little test drive and make sure nothing unexpected happens.